extra people. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and myself. Uh, Mike can hold this for me. Okay. Just a second. I'm doing this, kind of nervous. All right, uh, my name is Corey Crawford. Um, I'm giving you guys a persuasive speech on smoking cigarettes. All right. All right. All right, real quick, I want to do an exercise with you guys. Could you go ahead and close your eyes? All right. Close your mind and try to hold your breath for at least a minute. Ready? Go. All right, that's good. It's kind of hard, right? All right, basically what I'm trying to get across is if you like breathing, then smoking cigarettes is not for you. All right, it can literally take your breath away. Uh, all right, smoking is always seen on mainstream media as being cool. Um, a lot of actors you guys see in movies, they kind of smoke and they make it seem like it's the thing to do. You know, you see it on a lot of commercials. As of recently, you see like a lot of commercials trying to fight against smoking. I noticed on um, some commercials. Uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, Red Fox, I don't know if y'all know him. He played in his um, show, he used to come on, uh, Sanford and Sons. He used to think like he was having a heart attack. Well, I just recently found out that he actually had a massive heart attack and he died and a lot of people contributed that to smoking so I'm like wow while doing the research on this that's what I found out um, so uh, an author uh, Christian Northis he wrote an article in medical news today he stated that smoking is responsible for several diseases such as cancer long-term chronic respiratory diseases and heart diseases and I have an actual handout uh, you take one pass around and it has like a uh, uh, slew of diseases that smoking causes um, in certain parts of the body. Wow. All right. uh, according to the U.S. Centers Disease Control, $92 billion is lost each year from lost productivity resulting directly from smoke related death. To me that means um, basically um, companies and businesses are losing their uh, workers because uh, uh, too many smoke breaks basically all right um, um, they got to cover medical expenses also they have to pay for funerals so they're losing money and they're also losing workers at the same time so smoking is like uh, um, negatively affecting our economy look at it that way I actually fall into that category once upon a time I was in the military uh, I was a private, and I remember they would say, go on a smoke break, our supervisor. You go on your 15-minute smoke break. So, like, what's a smoke break? Come on, we'll show you. They all go out to the front or motor pool or whatever, and, like, they would start lighting up cigarettes. And I didn't want to be the only one not smoking, so I didn't try it. And I tried it. And it took eight months for me to figure out that I was smoking wrong. You're supposed to actually inhale it, and I was just blowing it. And I was trying to figure out why other people were like having lots of smoke come out of their mouth. And that's how I figured out, like, oh, okay. And I started getting dizzy. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is how you're supposed to feel. So I don't know if he contributed to that. They call it smoke break, you know, or go smoke yourself. I hear that a lot. So I did a lot of research, and, like, I don't know, it goes hand in hand, I guess. Um, why is smoking addictive? According to health columnist Lao Kleiman, MD, and Deborah Messing Kleiman, MPH, when you use, use tobacco products, nicotine is quickly absorbed into your bloodstream, and within seconds of entering your body, it reaches your brain. It causes the brain to release adrenaline, creating a buzz of pleasure and energy. All right, so basically, once you smoke, that pleasure and energy goes into your head. All right and it quickly 
goes down and that gives you the urge to want to smoke again. So you see a lot of people smoking three or four packs because they want to constantly feel that pleasure they get from smoking. All right. The Department of Health and Human Resources have found several harmful ingredients in cigarettes to include ammonia, which is a household cleaner, um, arsenic is used in rat poison, benzene, which is used to dye your um, clothes, so I guess that's what makes some people's lips turn black, it's a dye, butane, which is gas used in lighter fluid, carbon monoxide, cambium, which is used in battery, cyanide, lead, formaldehyde, which is used to preserve dead bodies. All right. And they also um, incorporated new stuff for the younger generation. They added stuff with uh, cigars like uh, sweeteners, um, berry flavors, egg scratch, and chocolate flavors and stuff to um, attract the youth. All right, now that we have heard the amount of damage smoking can cause, there are ways you can quit. All right, um, alternatives are medicines uh, like nicotine and patches. I actually uh, used to smoke, I attended a um, sensation class that actually worked for me. Um, I did research in acupuncture. A lot of people actually paid money to do that and they said it worked. Alright. Um, in conclusion, smoking has stood the test of time. We should all come together and adopt a new meaningful, healthier lifestyle to, um, for the next generation basically. We can uh, set a better example for them, you know, and fight this thing, epidemic smoking. Alright. In closing, I'll leave with a quote. When everything seems to be going against you, remember that airplanes take off against the wind, not with it. And that's by Henry Ford. He's an American industrialist and is the founder of the Ford Motor Company. That's it. Thank you. Good job. Oh, what was it so hard? Huh? All right. Hey, what class, class. is this for?